What is up guys, Ballistic Jalapeno here from Gaming Connection and we are here to go ahead and go over the Gears of War 5 review full in depth for you guys today. Now any disclaimer here, I'm going to try and keep it as uh, spoiler free as possible here but there is no promises to be made or kept here. Now with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Gears of War 5 is the second installment by the Coalition who are the, the stewards or the 343 industry of the Gears of War franchise. Now with this here being the fifth installment and also the second installment by the Coalition, I was expecting much with unease that Gears of War 5 was going to be another Halo 4 or Halo 5 here, especially from what we got from Gears of War 4. Now with that said, uh, especially coming by today's standards of like Anthem, it is heavy on microtransactions here, um, but un unfortunately nowadays that's just a thing we have to live by. But surprisingly, the game is decent by 2019 standards. Now with that, I do have some complaints and some arguments here that um, there should have been some type of delay or at least some of the issues that I was encountering should have been ironed out and fixed by the release of the game here. Now with this here, we are playing this on both an Xbox One S and also a game PC. So you're gonna see uh, a difference when we go ahead and go over the game. Uh, uh, visuals, how it runs, uh, what uh, what would be the minimum specs and best specs for that to go ahead and run on, on PC as well. Just to go ahead and dive into the storyline here, the world is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love what they've done. Uh, it is completely different. You can still tell that uh, survival is still the base aspect, but just uh, how the world and everything is recovering after Gears of War 3 is just remarkable. Um, the lighting, dynamics, the colors that they used palette wise for each of the different biomes is just uh, very fantastic. It's it's to the point where uh, I believe they're taking the most of the Unreal Engine for the Xbox One and pumping that out here. Uh, there's an excellent balance of new and old when it does come to the weapons, to the characters, um, to how dynamics and things work there. Uh, one of my favorite things is these skiff uh, missions where you're just riding around the world those are fantastic and it opens up the world dynamic a lot more than from the typical closed nature of how it does work there now exploration is, is pretty cool uh, you get to see several different areas that you never get to really see outside of the Guild War game alone there um, very cool and also they're, they're fleshing out the pendulum wars the UIR uh, why things and certain things have happened, uh, explaining more of where the Hammer of Dawn was truly coming from, uh, the political states, everything like that of during the Pendulum Wars before Emergence Day. Now what I'd love to see more, and this is coming from both sides here, is I'd love to see more of the UIR and also the Swarm. Um, definitely there's differences, there's culture differences, everything like that when it comes to these two uh, factions and I'd love to see more of that we got to see how the locusts uh, came from the Nexus they had their own religion uh, currencies everything like that and I'd love to see that also again with the swarm how does it differ from the original locust uh, colonization and inhabitants there I'd also love to see a longer campaign I believe four acts is very short I uh, usually we're typically used to five acts and something that is uh, satisfying when it comes to completing the game here. And I feel that we are kind of halfway left into something that should have been five acts long, but they cut it short just because they wanted to go ahead and make another Gears of War game. Now, with that here, I did have some issues. I did have some complaints, uh, especially when it does come to saving. Saving is very, very annoying. The autosave is a very fun feature, but it also makes you want to get upset and toss your Xbox out of the window. Uh, for some reason, I don't know if it was just for me or if anyone else has experienced this, uh, the auto-saving for some reason doesn't finish and gets stuck. So once you finish either a boss fight or go through a long ordeal fighting enemies there, it'll just auto-save and stay on that. It gets really annoying. You have to go ahead and uh, dashboard out or quit the game completely and then come back in. Uh, and then you've already lost 8 to 10 minutes of progress there that you have to go ahead and do all over again. This happened to me about 2 to 3 times, and it was just annoying. It's just something that shouldn't be happening in a AAA game. 
I think this is something so minor that it's just dumb at this point. Now with this here, it seems like I don't know what it is. If it was just me coming back to Gears of War after all these years. It's been a while since I've played a Gears of War game. But it seems like the boss battles in some of the areas are kind of, kind of small and kind of just uh, too small for you to maneuver and for you to properly fight. I saw this a lot with uh, some of the Wardens and also the Matriarch. Uh, the Matriarch was really annoying. I had to actually post a video for you guys there just to figure out how to beat the dumb thing because it is nothing easy. It's, um, it's unrealistic sometimes of how that Matriarch comes after you. And uh, just annoying. Now, one of the big areas that I find and take issue with with the Gears of War 5 campaign is just uh, the storyline itself and uh, them actually dragging it out. That is one of the biggest things. Um, you don't need to overstretch your storyline just to fill out your campaign. Write a new campaign. Write it longer. Write it more in depth. Uh, we find out in Gears of War 4 that Kate has something to do with the Locust. Now, with that here, you shouldn't be suspending us for over two and a half acts of the campaign of, ooh, what does Kate actually have to do with the Locust? Also, in the campaign of Gears of War 5, we find out that her grandmother was Myra. And we also find out why the Locusts were created and why they revolted and caused emergency. Now, with that here, definitely just better story. Um... It is a decent story overall, but it isn't great. It, it ranks on the scale of better than average. It, it could have been a lot worse, but just take it back with a grain of salt that the story is going to be overdrawn out, and it's going to be shorter than what you actually expect. Now a gem or something I wasn't expecting to be intrigued in and to be interested in so much was the Horde mode. Um, uh, it, it, just as I remember it, it's just as uh, compelling and awesome as Halo Firefight when it first came out. And they haven't drastically changed anything, trying to make anything better or worse. It, it's actually uh, relatively still the same with some basic building mechanics there. It's uh, really fun. Even if you are with random people, it is, a, it is a fun time. It's something I really enjoyed. I believe I played about an hour and a half the first day uh, on PC there. And I just really enjoyed it overall. Now, Escape is something a little different here. Uh, it is a great idea and great concept. Uh, when I think of it, I think of Spartan Ops from Halo 4. Um, trying to add you some bonus content, trying to give additional game modes, everything like that. But it is, uh, uh, the first round through I played through it, I got stuck and then I died. So, the, the things that I would recommend for that is uh, you are going to be putting a lot of time into Escape. Uh, it may be worthwhile. I, don't, I only give it a glance. Uh, over the rest of the game modes here uh, just because the first time I couldn't get through I just left the game mode now versus is one of those timeless classics it's a uh, it's something that I've always played since the entry of the Gears of War franchise when I got into Gears of War 1 uh, it's something I enjoyed when we I did uh, gaming competitions and everything uh, game battles back in the days uh, back in Gears of War 2 and 3 it's just something I always loved, uh, you know, perfect weapon balance, they don't try to change the mechanics too much there until they do, but overall it's uh, it's been something that has has been part of enjoyment when I've played Gears of War besides the campaign. Now with this, you know, we were long gone of the days of the host shotgun and uh, the unfair advantages, everything seems to be on dedicated servers there, but the cool thing is, is there is a weapon balance here. It's been a couple years since I've played Gears of War, so I'm not as uh, good as most other people here but it's something i enjoy right uh, seeing my body blown to bits seeing other people's body blown to bits with a nasha shotgun it's just something enjoyable it brings back a, a lot of good memories from the, the the golden days or the good days of gaming that i'd love to see again okay now into the conclusions guild of war 5 is not a great game but it isn't a bad game it kind of falls into that average category now that isn't a bad thing, but it isn't a good thing. I, I expect more out of a triple A game, uh, especially nowadays, uh, from first parties. That's that's just plain and simple. Uh, Sony has shown multiple times that they can do it. Even Xbox has uh, shown multiple times that they can go ahead and do it as well. So this is kind of leaving me just right there in the middle. Now, there are some good parts. I mean, Horde, and for the most part, exploring and uh, the world building and the campaign are pluses. Versus is just exquisite as always, but... It's still feeling lackluster, and 
if you are going to go ahead and go out and buy the game for $60 right now, I would basically wait and try to hold off until it's on sale. Uh, if you're planning to go ahead and get Xbox Live Game Pass, I'd try to go ahead and pull the trigger on that. Um, just because you are going to go ahead and get more for your money's worth from just not only Gears of War, but also all the other games on the Xbox Live Game Pass library. Now, if you're going to be getting this uh, for the holiday season as a present, or getting this to someone as a present, it isn't something that they'll chuck immediately into the fire, like if you were to give me a copy of Anthem. Now, those are only my thoughts and opinions. I'd like to hear yours. Uh, please let me know down in the comments of what you thought of Gears of War 5, and was I right or wrong about any things here. Now, my name has been Ballistic Jalapeno. Remember to like this and subscribe to the channel if you want more content. The next piece coming up, hopefully for review, will be The Outer Worlds. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.